on that. But Dr. Borlaug established the World Food Prize to recognize and inspire breakthrough achievements in increasing the quality, quantity, and availability of food with the hope that one day it could come to be seen as the Nobel Prize for Food and Agriculture. And laureates who have received our $250,000 prize come from countries and organizations around the world, Bangladesh, Brazil, China, Denmark, India, Mexico, Sierra Leone, Switzerland, the United Kingdom, the United States, and the United Nations. But they share one trait in common. Their achievements have uplifted millions and millions of people. This year, we add an individual from still another country to that part, um, pantheon of heroes, a laureate whose agricultural work has impacted millions of lives in sub-Saharan Africa and indeed around the world. Born in a remote African village, our laureate now serves as a plant breeder and a gen geneticist on the faculty of Purdue University, where his research has dramatically improved the production of sorghum, one of the world's five major grains. He developed and introduced the first sorghum hybrid in Africa in the early 1980s, which was drought tolerant and produced significantly higher yields. In the 1990s, he conquered the greatest biological constraint to cereal production in Africa, the deadly weed, Striga. Having discovered the biochemical basis of Striga's parasitic relationship with sorghum, our laureate's breeding program at Purdue produced many sorghum varieties resistant to drought and to Striga, with yields 10 times greater than local varieties. Our laureate has further partnered with leaders and farmers across sub-Saharan Africa to improve management practices for sorghum and with his work being carried forth by a new generation of young African agricultural scientists that he's personally trained and inspired. His achievements have impacted hundreds of millions of people. It's my privilege to announce that the 2009 World Food Prize laureate is Dr. Gabisa Ijeda of Ethiopia. This morning, one billion people around the world woke up hungry. Tonight, they will go to sleep hungry. Today, in a village in Niger, a woman will walk for miles in search of water to irrigate crops that are parched by drought. Today, in Haiti, a farmer's surplus fruit will go to waste because he has no way to store it or to bring it to market. Today in Congo, a family will flee a conflict that has left their farms and fields fallow. And today in a schoolhouse in Bangladesh, children will struggle to learn because their bodies are struggling to survive on insufficient nutrition. The effects of chronic hunger cannot be overstated. Hunger is not only a physical condition. It is a drain on economic development, a threat to global security, a barrier to health and education, and a trap for the millions of people worldwide who work from sunup to sundown every single day, but can barely produce enough food to sustain their lives and the lives of their families. Most of all, hunger belies our planet's bounty. It challenges our common humanity and resolve. We do have the resources to give every person in the world the tools they need to feed themselves and their children. So the question is not whether we can end hunger, it's whether we will. For years, brilliant and determined people have dedicated their lives to the fight against hunger. They have worked for breakthroughs in the science of agriculture. Uh, one, of course, is Norm Borlaug. His green revolution transformed farming in many parts of the world and saved millions of lives. Dr. Borlaug earned a Nobel Peace Prize for his efforts, but his work was also the work of men and women who labor unnoticed in labs and fields and factories around the world who invent better ways to raise, sell, and ship food so that the abundance of our world's harvest can be enjoyed by more people. 
Dr. Borlaug established the World Food Prize to keep our attention focused on the ongoing hunger crisis and on those whose work is significantly contributing to its end. This year, the World Food Prize is awarded to a man whose work is not confined to a single field, but covers several, from the science of plant genetics to the creation of thriving local markets to the training of farmers in new agricultural techniques. Dr. Ijeta began his journey in a hut in Ethiopia where he was born to a mother who was passionately committed to his education. He walked 20 kilometers every Sunday to attend school. He boarded in town for the week, and then he walked home to his family every Friday. Eventually, he made it to college, where he planned to study engineering. But his mother convinced him he'd do more good for the world if he studied agriculture. After completing his Ph.D. at Purdue, as you've heard from Ambassador Quinn, he has gone to work focusing on sorghum, a staple crop in parts of Africa, Central America, and South Asia. He helped develop Africa's first commercial hybrid strain, which needed less water and actually yielded more grain. Then he developed another variety, resistant to striga weed, which had regularly wiped out a significant portion of Africa's cereal crops. Even while he was making breakthroughs in the lab, he took his work to the field. He knew that for improved seeds to make a difference in people's lives, farmers would have to know how to use them, which meant they would need access to a seed market and the credit to buy supplies. So he traveled to India and studied its flourishing seed industry and then returned to Sudan, where he helped create one there along with a system to train farmers in crop management and help them purchase seed and fertilizers on a regular basis. Today, more than a dozen seed companies are operating in Sudan in the market he helped to build. Now, he reminds us that a system of agriculture that nourishes all humankind requires more than a single breakthrough or advances in a single field. It requires a sustained and comprehensive approach. We need to create a global supply chain for food. Today, that chain is broken, and we need to repair it and make it stronger. Uh, Dr. Ejeta, uh, as the laureate today, gives us an opportunity to reflect on what this World Food Prize actually does. Uh, first and foremost, every single laureate has always had an inspiring personal story. And that's important to me because I think it encourages young people in particular to see the, the value and the benefit of science and pursuing science and the impact that science can have on the lives of literally millions of people. Mr. Ambassador, you know the doctor's work and you know the impact it has had on the people of your great country uh, and most specifically on the children. Uh, the capacity to increase productivity of sorghum by 150 percent allows not only families to be fed but also families to export opportunity and bring wealth into their country, uh, which in turn provides a, a stronger and more viable future. The World Food Prize gives us a chance to celebrate those inspiring lives. And the Ruan family, uh, which has its own uh, tale of inspiration, uh, it, it is, should be congratulated for giving us this opportunity to focus. Dr. Borlaug should be congratulated because of his vision for the Food Prize, but specifically his commitment to the young people. One of the great things about the World Food Prize Foundation is its commitment to, to young people, encouraging young people in high school uh, in this country to think about careers in science, to understand what these laureates have done, and then give them the extraordinary life experience of being able to travel and work with the laureates. It is inspiring. We at USDA want to do our part as well. Uh, the Secretary has indicated that we want a comprehensive effort and approach on food security, and I would say not only around the world but also in the United States. Because as great a country as we are, as bountiful as the riches of this country are, we still unfortunately have hungry children in this country. And that too needs to be addressed with a comprehensive approach. And so this celebration gives us a chance to be reminded of the fact that there are still one billion people on this globe that are hungry and still give us the opportunity to focus particularly on the children.